All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ all of you. We welcome everybody, especially the Indonesian uh, people from Indonesia. We love them, uh, especially the Muslims. We care for them, and today we will show them how this, those who claim that they teach in your Islam, they are a bunch of idiots. Actually, I'm very grateful that Muslims trying to answer me, because each time they do so, they help us to make more Muslims leave Islam. And yesterday, or two days ago, you saw the video, I don't know if you saw it or not, where we showed you how uh, uh, Mr. Insan, he uh, admitted that saying that the sun set in murky water is very wrong. And he claimed that the one who said that it was Alexander the Great, but the fact it was his prophet. So he admitted that his prophet is a false prophet. And I wonder how many Muslims are going to leave Islam after the video he made, for he make it clear that there is no way uh, the true God will teach that the sun set in murky water. And he said clearly that I was lying in the translation or misleading Muslims about what this verse is talking about when the fact I was just reading what his prophet said. So this man, not only he do not know his religion, he is a fool trying to act as if he is smart. But the more he speak to defend Islam, the more he exposed Islam. And I'm very grateful for having such a man in our way. Today is no different. This guy, he is like a this, you know, 10 years old kid. He collected some questions from Facebook, I guess. And supposedly, uh, <clears throat> as you see in the title of his video, he will give me five BMW. I was wondering, you know, when a person, he promised you five BMW, why he is promising me money, if I can answer. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Obviously, this guy, he himself, he is after money. Otherwise, he will not think about, uh, what about promising me heaven? Hmm? What about promising me to know, uh, to see the truth? Uh, what about promising me, uh, you know, something good? I mean, what uh, what uh, five VM the video? Now, let us go to the video and see what this guy want to say to us. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, 5 BMW Grand Prize BMW for Christian Prince Only for me? Uh, uh, but just This is only for me? What about we give every Indonesian one, you idiot? I mean, your people, they are poor, they are hungry, they are working in Saudi Arabia as, as you know, made you know, as long as you have money for 5 BMW, what about you donate the money you have to those poor people? You are a fraud. That's why you chose to be a Muslim, right? Because it's a business. Go ahead. Hi, Christian Prince. Uh, hi, hi. Since when a Muslim, he say hi. Assalamu alaikum, you idiot. What hi? Hi, hi, how are you? Everybody waiting for you so we can hear the wisdom of Muhammad and barbecue. Hi, hi, how are you? What is this? You are an ustaz in Indonesia, claim to be sheikh, and you are saying to me, hi. I'm really shocked. Okay, hi. First, show me the verse in the Bible that tells Jesus is a Christian. Stop! What? What this guy he just said? Show me a verse in the Bible that... Uh, <coughs> Unbelievable! That's it took you too much to think about those questions, brother. I mean, the first question alone is a disaster by itself. How you get those questions, brother? Show me that Jesus Christ is a Christian. <laughs> I cannot believe it. <laughs> you idiot! He is a Christ. How he can be Christian? <laughs> It's like saying, uh, show me that uh, Allah, he became a Muslim. Actually, yeah, in the Quran, it says Allah became a Muslim. Hold on, let me show you so we can laugh at your God. Have you ever heard of a God like this? Look at this. Let us laugh together. Allah, he took shahada, brother. You idiot. Christ is a Christ. How he can be Christian is a name given for those who follow Christ. So Christ is following Christ. 
You are an idiot. Allah took shahada. Allah says, There is no God. Shahid Allahu anna hu la ilaha illa huwa. And the angels. I don't know how, why he added the angels there, which make it very confusing in Arabic. There is no God but he that he witnessed Allah. Allah took shahada. Allah witnessed into who? You see, when we witness, we witness to higher authority. This is why they have a witness and we have a judge. So when Allah, he witnessed, he witnessed to who? That because the one who made the Quran is an idiot. Secondly, we go back toward Christ as a Christian. Hmm. Okay, I will ask you the same question, by the way. For us, we cannot say Christ is a Christian, you idiot, because he's a Christ. If we ask you right now, where Christ in the Quran, he says, I am Nasara. Don't you Muslim, you say those who follow Christ, they are called Nasara. Hmm? This is the Quran in front of us. And we see uh, Isa talking. He never said that he is Nasara. So why you are calling those who follow Isa Nasara? Or which Muslim you translate as a Christian? Huh? And uh, did your Isa in the Quran says he's a Muslim? Did he say I'm a Muslim? Those are the verses about Isa. If we go in the Quran, chapter 3, verse number 252, uh, Isa, he said to his followers, Who of you will be my helpers to Allah? The Hawarin, they said, We are the Ansar of Allah. And we are Muslims. Do you see it? But Isa never said he's a Muslim. So where, why are you Muslim? You say he's a Muslim. Secondly, if the Christians are Muslimun, why you call them Nasara? And this is the verse in front of you. If we change the translation, let us go to the uh, Indonesian translation. Hmm. Who want to help be my helper to Allah? Who want to be the Christians? Then they said we are Muslims. The Christian they said we are Muslims. So why you call them Nasara if they are if they are Muslims? See here the the stupidity of those people who open their mouth they don't know what they are talking about. Let us hear more of his questions so we can make it clear for everybody that this guy he have no idea what he's talking about you won't find any it's because the name of christian emerged for the first time in antioch long after jesus died and those who gave a name of christian were barnabas and paul Not just to show you that you are stupid read the verse for us and people will laugh go quote the verse Jesus. You can read it in Acts chapter number 11, hmm. verses number 24 to 26. Okay, let's go to Act and everybody will laugh at you. Just to show you Muslims that those people who they are, they are just a bunch of fools and they are trying to fool you. They don't even know what they are talking about. And imagine this guy, he studied the case. This is the verses he is quoting for us, and you will see what he is saying is absolutely a false statement. It doesn't say that Barnabas and uh, and uh, Paul are the one who said that. It says the first time they were called, the first time they were called, the disciples, they were called people, they called them hmm? Christians first in Antioch. So the people who call, the people of Antioch they called the christians christians this is the first time we have been given the name why we are because we are following christ so you are a stupid and you are a liar and you are a fabricator according to islam paul was exist in the time of jesus and not only that he saw jesus and not only that jesus made him blind 
So according to Islam, Paul was one of the disciples of Jesus and same as Barnabas. If we go in the Quran, <coughs> It's, it's not easy to debate someone is ignorant because you are debating his ignorance, not his knowledge. You see here, this is your Quran in your language, Indonesian. I don't know what it says. You see, I have no idea what it says because this is not in my language. I mean the translation. But in Arabic, it says here, إِذْ أَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ or إِلَيْهُمْ إِثْنَيْنْ We sent to them two. And they accused him of lying. And then we string them with the third. Okay, who is the third? If you go and read the Islamic interpretation, you will see that they agree that the third is Paul. This is Ibn Kathir, chapter 36, verse number 14. We reinforced them with the third mean. We supported them, string them with the third messenger. Ibn Jurayr narrated, from Wahab ibn Sulaiman, from Shu'ayb uh, al-Jabi, the names of the first two messengers were Shamun, which means Simon, and Yohanna, which means John. And the name of the third is Bolos, Paul. So even your stupid yellow pages of the Quran confirm that Jesus, he sent the three messengers, and the city was Intiak. Read, read carefully, you see it? The city is Intiak. This is your Muslim book. This is your Muslim book copying stories from the Bible, changing names, playing with it because it's written by ignorant, confirming something that Paul was a messenger, was sent to Antioch. And you are the one who says the one who created this is Paul. But in Islam, Paul is a good man. The stupid liars today, they claim that Paul was a bad person, I mean, where this is coming from? Can you show me one place your prophet says Paul was a bad person? Actually, I can show you from different books. Give me a second. We do not tolerate ignorance. We do not. Their ignorance is amazing, but we are not going to let them get away with their lies and their ignorance. Read with me. All of you Muhammadan people. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi, value number 18, page number 90. If we go here, it says here, and the, and the Isa he came to them and he says, Who is my helper to Allah? Ansari to Allah. They said, We are your helper. And they believe in him and they support him. All right? If we go down a little bit, we will see the following. And this verse came down about the messengers of Isa. Peace be upon him. Ibn Ishaq said, and from those who Isa he sent them between his disciple, it was the following names. They don't even know how to quote the names. Imagine we have a person, his name is Fotros. Have you ever heard of a disciple? His name is Fotros. We never heard of Fotros. Ah, welcome to Islam. And the second one is Poros. So, Phutros and Poulos, they were sent to Rumia, which means the land of the Roman. And Darius and Matthew, they were sent to the land where the people there, they eat people. Where is that? Don't ask. Muhammadan are talking. When Muhammadan are talking, nobody knows what they are talking about. And Thomas was sent to the Babylon in the east. And Philippus was sent to Cortagena in Africa. And Yohannes, he was sent to uh, uh, to the people of the cave. <laughs> and Yaqusobos, Yaqusis, Yaqus, he was sent to Jerusalem. And the son of Telma, he was sent to the Arabian Peninsula and Hijaz. And Simon was sent to the Berber land, barbarian land. And Yehuda. And Bardas were sent to Alexandria and what around it, which means the Egypt. And Allah support them with the proofs. Now let us translate, just to show you this, this idiot, when they, when they talk, they have no idea what they are saying. Let us translate first to English. Here we go. The one who sent them from, they were sent by Jesus, the apostle of Jesus, the disciple, where? Patras. 
This is the translation of the word Fatras, which is funny. And then the second one is Paul. And he was sent to the Roman, etc. And then you will see at the end, after all mentioning, like even he sent to Arabia and etc. You will see that Allah, he supported them. Allah supported Paul. And he made them victorious. So when those who claim to be scholars, they attack Paul, obviously they are not scholars. They are a bunch of donkeys. They never read their books. Can you show me one single place your prophet, he said, Paul was a bad person? No, you cannot. So why you are lying? And why your Islamic scholars, the old scholars saying Paul was a messenger of Jesus? Let us translate now to the Basha language. Read carefully with me, Muslims in Indonesia. This is the Tafsir al Qurtubi. This is not a Christian prince saying that. This is not a Jew. This is not a Hindu. This is one of the biggest scholars of Islam. Not like this idiot who did not know how to read his prophet name correctly. And let us see what it says there. As you know, I don't understand your language. But I can make it easy. It says here that the messengers of Yeshua, Jesus, okay, the Rasul, he sent them. There was Paulus. Paulus was sent to Rome. Do you see it? And then he named all the names after sent to Africa, sent to etc., sent to Asia, sent to uh, Alexandria, sent to Jerusalem, you name it. And here, by the way, this is, will make it very uh, clear that Muhammadan, when they say that the Bible is corrupted, it's a lie. Why? How does the Bible became everywhere? And those are the disciples of Jesus, who they saw Jesus. How you can corrupt the Bible everywhere? You see, let us say the Muslim, they claim that the king of the Roman, he decided to change the gospel. Okay, what about, I mean, the Roman are not controlling the whole world. Christian, they went everywhere. They went even to Persia. They went to India. One of the oldest churches, actually, it is in Africa and India, not in Rome. So as you see, the, the, the Bible spread all over. And those people are disciples of God. They will never allow anyone to change the word. So let us say somebody want to change the words in Rome. What about those who live in India? They will agree with Rome, says, okay, we will change it for you. So this is a stupid claim. Muslims, they come with it always, but they have no base of it. And look, when Jesus, he sent those messengers, and look what the Quran is saying, that those are messengers of Allah. How Jesus is the one who sent them, but they are messenger of Allah, unless Jesus and Allah is one. For sure, I, for me, I refuse to call Jesus Allah because Allah is Satan, is Satan for me. One of you, he said to me that Arab Christian, they have in their Bible translation of the word uh, God as Allah. This is translation. This is a fraud. Our God is not Allah. As simple as that. The same as the Muslim when they translate the word Jesus or Yeshua. But there is nowhere in the Quran it says Jesus or Yeshua. It says Isa. So this is a fraud. This is a false translation. Anyone who, who changed the word, he make it a, a name is not exist. He is making a fraud. As simple as that. And I understand the Christians were under the Islamic occupation for 1400 years until now ISIS. But this is not an excuse. Allah is not exist in the Bible for very simple reason. Allah is the name of the God of the Muslims. Is not the word mean God. So if you want to tell me I am a Christian, I'm using the word Allah as a word mean God. I don't mean the God of Muslims. I understand, but still this is wrong, especially now you know it's wrong. So here we notice that those people who attack Christianity and claiming that Christianity is something created by Paul, we see that the name of Paul is all over their books and he was a great man. How the messengers of Jesus, they became messengers of Allah. Do Jesus have authority to make me a prophet? To make me messenger of God? Unless he is God. And this is all is about them. So those people, when they make a claim, their claim is funny, it's silly. They are like a bunch of kids 
who they are like uh, bullying somebody you know like a bully he just want to make a fun of you but he himself is a stupid he's an idiot second nearly all christians as well as you go to the church on sunday my question is which verse in the gospel that solves the commandment of Allah or Jesus to go to church on Sunday? If there is, please choose a new series, BMW. Okay, let me show you that this idiot is a certified donkey again. He is saying, like, what, what is the point of this question? You need to ask yourself first, what is the point? The point is that Christian they are celebrating Sunday. But they should not celebrate Sunday. Okay, can you show us from the Quran what day Allah He says to the Christian to celebrate? You do not know. And if I show you from the Bible why we Christian we celebrate Sunday, you won't understand because you are a donkey. And let me explain to you, my friend. Sabbath is not a word means Saturday. Sabbath is the rest day. It's called Sabbath in Hebrew is a word mean rest. Sabbath is a word mean rest. So God He created the whole universe. And he have the Sabbath as the day where he stopped working. God don't need to rest, but here rest means that everything is done. But for us as a human, Sabbath is a rest day. If we go in the Bible, we'll find many verses, but I don't know if I need really to... Uh, if I quote for you some verses from the Bible, are you going to understand or you will not? Obviously you will not. Because you choose not to understand, you don't want to understand. The seventh day, the seventh day is Sabbath, wherever it is. The seventh day, the day you choose to be your rest day, is a Sabbath. Now, I will go with you as a Muslim first. Just to show everybody that we can defeat Islam by using Islam without even touching the Bible. This is Ibn Kathir. Chapter 16, verse number 124. Now this idiot, he will say to me, he don't agree with Islam. Islam is stupid, right? He will say, I, I ask you from the Bible, why you are showing me from Islam? They know we will show you from the Bible and we are showing you first from Islam because this is your religion. So if you don't agree with Islam, you are the Muslim no more. And that's the whole point. Read carefully. The prescription of the Sabbath for the Jews. Read with me, donkey. Learn how to read. There's no doubt that for every nation, Allah prescribed one day of the week for the people. Who is the one who prescribed Allah? To gather and to worship him. For this ummah, ummah in Arabic means nation, which means the Muslims. He prescribed Friday because it is the sixth day. <laughs> Friday what oh, guys did he say Friday is the sixth day okay but the Bible says that God he rests in the seventh day so you are going against God yourself it is the sixth day of what the sixth day of a creation Allah created the, the in six days in which Allah, he completed and perfected his creation. Okay, but this is not, see, he's still working. According to Muhammad, Allah, he finished creating. The last thing he created, it was Adam. And Allah, he forgot about Eve. In a Friday afternoon, let us go. See, if I show them from the Bible, they will say we don't agree with the Bible anyway. Now what they will say, they will say we don't agree with Muhammad. This is the point of showing them their stupidity from their own stupid books. Here we go. This is Allah. He created. His, this is the creation of Allah supposedly. How it work? And here, by the way, there's a huge mistake Muhammad he made. Proving to us again that he's a false prophet. Allah created the clay on Saturday. Which day? Saturday. Okay. And created the mountains in Sunday. And then he created the trees in Monday. And then he created things entirely in labor in Tuesday. He created the light in Wednesday. 
and then he caused the animal to spread in Thursday and then he created Adam Friday afternoon okay so why you are taking Friday as rest day when Allah did not finish yet in Friday Sabbath is a word mere rest day so how this became your holiday let us count how many words here we have how many days just to show you that Muhammad is a false prophet too number one is Saturday this is day number one right be my witness okay Sunday is number two Monday is number three Tuesday is number four Wednesday is number five and he spread the animals in Thursday this is number six and then he created Adam in a Friday afternoon this is seven but Muhammad he claimed that Allah created the earth and the heaven in six days that's mean the creation of Allah was seven days not six and as long he finish in Friday afternoon so which day is the day he rested so what is the day after Friday Saturday so you Muslim you should have Saturday as your prayer day because Sabbath is what is a, a, what, what this is what Sabbath mean I mean look at the stupid religion they took the word Sabbath and they put it in their Arabic language they do not know that the word Sabbath mere rest so how Sabbath is a word mere rest and you work in Saturday by adopting the word Sabbath in your religion you adopted the meaning so your God Allah he stopped working in Sabbath so why you are celebrating Friday secondly your prophet he confirmed that it took Allah seven days to finish now we go back to show you more points it says Allah prescribed this day for the children of Israel through his prophet but they change it and choose Saturday Allah he choose which day Friday for the Jews this is what Ibn Kathir is saying and they choose to change it to Saturday it was the day which created and did not create anything as he had complete his creation on Friday Allah he made observe of the Sabbath obligatory for them in the laws of the Torah hold on a second ago you said you change it to Saturday now you are saying he made it obligatory I mean are you mentally ill here is saying that they choose to change it to Saturday a line after he say Allah he made them observe Saturday do you believe it do you believe this chapati how they are the one who choose Saturday and they change it and then you say Allah he made them observe Sabbath obligatory for them in the law which means in the Torah and the Torah is coming from who from Allah supposedly so how you say they are the one who changed it <laughs> read 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 and die laughing okay and then uh, they observe it Saturday until Allah sent the Isa okay what happened he sent the Isa son of Maryam it was said he told them to change it to Sunday <laughs> what the donkey Mr. Insan will do now according to your Islamic religion it was Isa who told us to make it Sunday you idiot Who is the one who told the Christian to make it Sunday? Isa. So now what we will say? We have to choose either uh, Mr. Insan is a certified donkey or he is a certified camel. You are the one who just said, show me one verse where Isa he said to you pray in Sunday okay here we go show me where Isa he said pray for me in Sunday stupid is amazing let me find the hadith this is Sahih Muslim and we can show it. this is Sahih this is not weak so don't play the game of weak read carefully 
It was a Friday from which Allah diverted those who were before us. Allah diverted us from them. For the Jews, the day set aside for a prayer was Sabbath. Who is the one who did that? Allah. And for the Christian, it was Sunday. And Allah turned toward us and guided us to Friday. And this donkey is asking, why you Christian don't you, you are celebrating on Sunday? But it is your God who made us Sunday according to your prophet. So when this idiot saying to me, why you are praying on Sunday? That is because of your stupidity, my friend. Any day, any day is for God is Sabbath. It can be Sunday, it can be Tuesday, it can be Monday. God, he don't care really. You see, what Jesus says about Sabbath? Let us teach you some wisdom. What does that mean? If you go to Mark chapter 2, and this is, exists in, in many places, you will see how Jesus explained to the donkeys like those who claim to be knowledgeable. He said to them, who is talking? The Messiah. The Sabbath was made for the man not the man was made for Sabbath. Sabbath is a day of rest made for the man. God don't really care. God, he wants you to live better. People, they are obsessed with making money and working 24 hours, seven days a week if they can. So God, he forced them by saying, if you want to follow me, you take a day you and your servants and your employees stop worshiping money stop going after money so this day was made for the man not the man was made for the day you muslims make the man made for a day when god everything he created it's created for the man you see you know if we go in the quran just to show you that the difference in the logic between us as a christians and the followers of the pagan Muhammad. Why the man is created in Islam? To worship Allah. Why the man is created in Christianity? To rejoice with God. I did not create a human and the genie except to worship me. That is the only reason. Chapter 51, verse number 56. So the difference between Christianity and Islam is a huge. Allah in Islam is just a lonely person. He wants people to worship him. He is a mad person. He is a crazy person. He want to have fun. So he decided to create us. And then if we don't do what he do, he will start barbecuing us and enjoy torturing. He's a, he's, he's a maniac. He's sick. In Christianity, no. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. He loved what? He loved the world. Which world? Indonesia, every country, all people. All the act of God in Christianity is about God loving us. This is why we Christians, when we pray, we say, Our Father. You see, a relationship with, with God in Christianity is about Father. Not a God who is sick. He created me just to worship Him. Why? He's lonely? Yes, He is. We worship God. We obey God. But God do not need slaves. He do not need us anyway. Our God is all about love. For God so loved the world, so he sent his only begotten son. To do what? To save us. You see how much love there? In Islam, Allah, he created you for a very simple reason. Allah is bored. He need, he need, he need the, uh, Netflix. You are Netflix for Allah. Actually, there's a hadith. I would like to share it with you, Muslims, Muhammadan. And when you, when you see it, you will die laughing. Read carefully. Hadith Lawlaka. What Lawlaka mean? If not you. If not you. Question. Was res in re res respected ulama of the religion and Sharia, what they say about this hadith? What hadith? Lawlaka ma khalaqta al-aflaq. Does it say that if not Muhammad, if not Muhammad, Allah will not create anything? 
answer indeed the prophet of Allah Allah pray for him and salute him is the reason for the creation of Adam and the universe you must worship a man his name is Muhammad Allah is lonely he created a man he like him his name is Muhammad he's a spoiled son maybe and then he told Muhammad okay I'm going to create the universe just for you okay do you like it Muhammad he said okay I like it and then it says if the Prophet of Allah Allah pray on him and salute him was not to exist then the arsh the kursi the chair the chair of Allah even the chair of Allah Allah will be without a chair standing until now the word the, the pen of Allah the sky the earth the heaven the hell the trees the stones all of those will not exist so Allah in the Quran he created a human being to worship who obviously to worship Muhammad do you see it and just to show you another sickness and here they are confirming even more like more stories you can read the whole page it's, it make you sick it make you will you, you know you, you will have you will, you will vomit but Muhammad he made it even more clear about his sick God he said your God Allah is a sick person by him who's talking Muhammad not Christian Prince Abu Huraira reported messenger of Allah saying by him whose hand is my life if you were not to commit sin Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you by those who would commit sin and seek forgiveness for Allah and then he will burn in them so what is the purpose of creating you Muslims Allah want you to sin and so you sin all day long you have sex you do drugs you kill you steal and then at the end of the day you say Allah forgive me please Allah forgive me forgive me I kiss the black stone Allah forgive your sin that's it Allah don't want people not to sin he want the earth to be full of sinners Allah is the devil as you see Christians did God did the Messiah create us so we will do sin or he said be holy like your father be holy like your father in heaven this is what this this is the command of Christ Allah he wants you to be filthy if you don't become filthy Allah will kill you read it so they lie to you they say Islam is against sin the fact is the opposite Muhammad is encouraging you to do sin Allah is encouraging you Mr. Insan, I challenge you to have the courage to give me your Skype. I will call you. Don't call me. I will call you. You choose the time. You choose the day. You choose the hour. And I will be happy to call you. And not only that. You choose even what you want to talk about. I mean, how easy it is. Not only that. I accept that you ask me to ask you the question, which means the question I will give it to you is written by you. <laughs> Have you ever heard of an exam like this? You tell me what to ask you. How easy it can be. Even though you will not be able to debate me. I will make you write the question, which I will give it to you. You write it. You choose the questions. I will make you choose a topic. I will make you in control. You are the you are the you are the guy. Yet you will not dare to do it. I feel sorry for you, my friend. You are old. You might die soon. Repent. Stop following the pagan God, Allah. Shame on you in this age to be deceived by sexual God. Those promises does not fit with the mighty God his holiness those fit only with someone is sexual maniac trying to seduce the Bedouin Arab who they have nothing in their life except wine and sex this is why the Quran promised them why in heaven rivers of wine river of milk an endless penis and a penis will never sleep 
an endless number of women and each time you sleep with them they will become virgin again that's your god if this is god so what is pimp i will leave that for the muslims who will listen to this thank you all for being here may the lord bless you and i will see you again christ is lord islam is false and we leave you in peace with the lord of peace the messiah the christ God loved the Muslims, not only loved the Christians. For he loved the Muslims, we are here to show the love of God to them. To show them that Islam is nothing but false. Islam is nothing but a fraud. And Muslims, obviously, they have nothing to talk about except making fabricating stories. They attack Paul, but yet in their book, Paul is a great man. They make Paul the one who created Christianity when their book says Paul was a messenger of God. They say things which does not make sense and they cannot support what they say. And then we find we open their books or we get them busted from their books. This is how silly they are and this is how shallow they are. They have nothing to stand on. They have nothing to follow. They have no one to guide them. And the only guidance can come from the Messiah. Go, my friend, and read the Gospel of Christ and see how wise it is, how wonderful it is. Not only it's about wisdom, it's about something will feed your spirit. It is something will speak to you about your daily life. In the year 2020, still there is no book can speak to your story. Not a story exists 2,000 years. Your story, the Messiah, he speak to you today. In every teaching he says, in every page he say, he is talking to you about your life, about your job, about your suffering, about your pain, about your cases, about everything you are suffering from. That is the Messiah, the Word of God, the one who live, it live by living with you, not by written in a book. The book will not make it living word of God. The living word of God is the one who live my life, who come to me when I need it, to help me, to guide me, to be strong with it. Not a book I recite and repeat. I don't even understand what it's saying. It's in different language. The word of God, my friend, is salvation. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection. I am the truth. I am the door. The one who believe in me and die will live. So we invite you all Muslims in Indonesia to believe in the living Messiah who is right now as we speak in heaven, listening to us, to me, to you. And he will be the judge in the judgment day, even in Islam. Soon you will be standing in front of the Messiah. Get ready. Get ready. This fool man cannot save you. Thank you. May the Lord bless you all. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon. Bye-bye.